Hello, and welcome to Art with Mrs. Torres. This is April, my favorite time of year. At this time of year, all of our flowers are blooming in our yard, and it's just so colorful. At this time of year in April, my Armenian friends are celebrating their culture. And there is an Armenian artist named Martyros Sarian that I want to teach you about today. Now, Martyros Sarian was an impressionistic painter, and he painted many different paintings of flowers, plants, vegetables, fruit, hillsides, landscapes, mountain ranges, anything that had to do with nature. And I thought it would be fun for us to recreate one of his famous paintings today. We're going to be doing something called an oil pastel resist. Now, don't worry. If you don't have oil pastels, you can use crayons to do a resist as well. We're also going to need some watercolors. So any brand will work, whatever you've got laying around the house. Let's get ready to create a beautiful, colorful painting inspired by Martyros Sarian. Well, let's get ready to do our Martyros Sarian's beautiful painting. Today we are going to be doing a painting that is called Pumpkin and Pepper. So we are looking at a picture of his painting. This is not his original painting, obviously, but I printed it and I wanted to show you. We've got a large pumpkin. That's a fun shaped pumpkin, isn't it? And then these are some peppers. I can see some other vegetables in the background. This might be a lemon. I'm thinking that might be a lemon, maybe this one too. That looks like an eggplant. And this looks some like some type of squash. What do you think that is? So I thought it would be fun to kind of recreate this project today. And we are gonna be using watercolor paper. We're gonna be using watercolors. You're gonna need a brush and a napkin, and then you're gonna need some oil pastels. Now, if you don't have oil pastels, guess what? You can use crayons. Crayons will work just as well as oil pastels. They're a little harder to draw with. You have to push a little harder, but they work just as good as oil pastels. You're gonna need a little bowl of water or a cup of water to rinse our brush in between colors. And other than that, that's all you need. So go ahead and pause the video and gather up a piece of watercolor paper, some watercolors, a paintbrush, a napkin, some oil pastels or crayons, a little cup or bowl of water, and then meet me back here and we'll begin our lesson. Welcome back. I've got my watercolor paper. I've got my napkin and my paintbrush. I have my paints. I have my oil pastels. And I am ready. Oh, and my bowl of water. Do you have your bowl of water? Now put everything off to the side. All you need right now is your watercolor paper and your oil pastels. So let's look at our example from our artist. And you can see that first off, the biggest thing in our painting is our giant pumpkin. You see our pumpkin? Now, if I look right here, this kind of looks like the letter C. Do you see that? So I think if I drew a big fat letter C right up here at the top of my paper, and I drew a giant backwards C on this side, that's already half of that pumpkin. So let's look in our oil pastel box or your crayon box, and I want you to choose a color that looks like a light brown or an orangey brown. So I've got a color that kind of matches his painting here. If you don't have a color that looks like this, then grab orange or grab yellow, any color that you want to start with to make our giant pumpkin. You could even use orange. So let's look. First thing I see is a side right here that looks kind of like the letter C and it's up toward the top of the paper. So my paper is gonna be horizontal, which means along this direction. And up here at the top of the paper, right up here, I'm gonna make the letter C. Now make it kind of big. Okay. Now I'm gonna make the neck of our pumpkin. So I'm gonna make it kind of go up a little bit on this side. And I'm gonna do the same thing on this side, up a little bit on this side. And then do you see it starts to go down? So now I'm gonna curve it down. And then do you see what it's doing? It's looping around right here, kind of like we're gonna make a big curve. And then we can do the same thing on this side. So this one goes up 
and then it loops around. And all we have to do is connect it. Well, look, mine doesn't look exactly like this artist's picture, but that's okay. And I bet yours doesn't look like mine either. Now, right here on the end, I'm gonna make a little stem because he made a stem on his. And then I'm gonna draw a curvy line right here. This is kind of the bottom of the pumpkin. You see that? And then I'm gonna draw one swooping line that copies what this is doing. So I'm gonna copy it going down and up. And then I'm gonna draw another one next to it. I'm gonna go up, down, and then I'm gonna bring it to the end. See how we're doing that? And then I'm gonna skip a space. I'm gonna do it again. Up, down, to the end. And I'm gonna do it again to the end. Now on this side, down here at the bottom, I'm gonna curve it down and back to the tip. And I think I have room to do one more. Down and back to the tip. Now you might have less than me and that is okay. Now, once I've done that, my pumpkin is almost done. I'm gonna come back in and use another color later, but right now that part of the pumpkin is done. So now I'm gonna take the same color that you're using and I'm gonna trace a circle over here to make a lemon. So I'm gonna use the same color and right below here, I'm gonna make a circle. Now yours might be bigger than mine. It might be smaller. Either way, that's fine. And then over here, look at this shape. This kind of looks like a lemon that's got a little crack in it. Maybe it's a nice juicy lemon. And that's way over here in the bottom, kind of toward the corner down here. So I'm going to make a lemon shape. Kind of looks like an egg. Now yours is going to look different than mine, and that is absolutely fine. Now go ahead and put this color back. And the next color I'm gonna look for is yellow. So let's find a yellow in your pastel box. Now my box has two different shades of yellow. You pick the yellow that you like. I like the darker yellow, the little brighter yellow. And I'm gonna trace now over my circle that I did for the lemon. And I'm gonna trace over my circle over here or my egg shape for my lemon. And then I'm gonna take this pastel and I'm not gonna color it in. I'm just gonna scribble a little bit. Now, do you notice I still have lots of paper showing? I'm gonna do the same thing on this. I'm just gonna scribble a little bit, kind of like a quick little zigzag. So you can see, I want to remember later that that's the color I'm gonna paint it is yellow, but we don't wanna color it in. We're just doing a quick scribble. Right now I'm gonna take my yellow and I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna to start to use my yellow to create this funny shaped uh, squash. So the first thing I notice is up at the top, it's got a rounded top. So I'm gonna make a little rounded top and then it gets a little chubbier on the sides and it has a skinny neck and then it has a really fat, bottom. So I'm going to make a chubby bottom and a chubby bottom. It's going to be kind of behind here. It looks like it's behind my pumpkin. And then it's got kind of a wavy line that goes down the middle. I'm going to take my yellow and just scribble a little bit on one side, not the other, just one side. I'm going to put my yellow back in my box and now I'm going to switch over to the color that I see in that squash. It looks green to me. Does it look green to you? I see some green. So now I've got a couple different greens to choose from in my box. I'm gonna use the light green. If you only have one shade of green in your box, use whatever you've got. I'm gonna take my kind of yellow, yellowy green color. I'm gonna trace around just like what I did before with my lemons. I'm gonna retrace my outline, retrace my wibbly wobbly line, retrace my scribbles. And I'm gonna add a little bit of scribbles on this side too. When I'm done with my green, I'm gonna go ahead and put that color away. 
And now I'm gonna look for a darker green. I have a darker green in my box. If you don't have a darker green, you could try blue. Blue would be really pretty on top of your green. So I'm gonna take my darker green and retrace one more time. And this time I'm only gonna scribble dark green on this side. I'm still leaving some paper. When I'm all finished with my green, I'm gonna put that color back in my box. And now I'm going to look for my next color and that looks like purple. Do you see that? This I think is an eggplant. So I'm gonna look for a purple shade in my box. I've got two different colors of purple in my box. So I am going to choose one and that's the color I'm gonna draw with. So I'm gonna make, what's that? It looks kind of like the shape of the lemon but you could make it round like a big circle. So I'm gonna make it right over here. I don't have room to place it exactly where it is in the painting here. So I'm just gonna put it right next to my lemon. I'm gonna make a big old circle. And I see some scribble scrabbles. Do you see the scribble scrabbles in there? So I'm gonna do the same thing and I'm gonna copy what Marta Rosarian did and I'm gonna scribble scrabble on mine. Just a little bit. Not too much. I'm gonna save some paper so I can paint. The, paper, the paint is only gonna to stick to the paper. So when I'm done with my purple, I'm gonna go ahead and take that color and I'm gonna put that color back in my box. Now I have another shade of purple. So if you want to, you can retrace what you just did and use the other shade of purple too. Or if you don't, that's okay. You could trace over it with blue. Blue is gonna be one of our colors that we're gonna be using at the very end. So if you don't have purple, look, you could trace over it with blue and it's beautiful with blue. When you're all finished with your purple eggplant, next comes the next part of our painting, which is the peppers. So our painting is called pumpkin and pepper. These are peppers. These are red hot chili peppers. So we're going to look for a color that you think would be red hot. So I've got a couple different shades that will look like something that would be hot. I've got dark red. I have an orangey red. I have a regular red and I have an orange. So you can experiment with any of these colors or you could use all of them to create your pepper. So choose one that you want to start with. I'm going to use kind of this orangey red one and we're going to draw a pepper. So a pepper kind of looks like a carrot. It's round on one end and pointed on the other. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to start by making the letter C. That's going to be the end of my red hot chili pepper and it's going to come to a point. So I'm going to bring my pastel and I'm going to bring it down. I'm going to make a sharp little point on the end and then I'm going to bring it back. And I don't want to color it in, but I am going to scribble a little bit at the bottom. So that's chili pepper number one. There's another pepper over here. So if you have room, you can make another one here. So this one's facing the other direction. So I'm going to make a backward C. And I'm going to bring it down, make a sharp little point on the end and bring it back. And I'm going to scribble a little bit just on the bottom. And then I see one more over here, kind of in front of the lemon. So let's see if I can make that one. I'm going to make a backward C. And I'm going to bring it down to a point, kind of makes a little curve. Make a point and bring it back. I'm going to give it a little scribble on the bottom. And when you're finished, you can go ahead and put that color away. Now, I like to do two different colors. So I'm going to grab a different color, red. I have this kind of dark red here. I'm going to retrace my lines around the outline. That was pretty easy. And you can add a little bit of scribbles on the bottom if you want to, but you don't have to. And then we're gonna to have to add the stems. Do you see those stems? So the stems and the outline are in a dark color. So let's look at what we have colored already. What is the darkest color that you see here? Well, it's definitely not the yellow. It could be the green. I could use the green as the stem. 
I could use this light tan, but when I look at all these colors, the colors that seem the darkest to me is the purple. So let's take our purple now and we can use this to make some stems on the end of our peppers. We can also use our purple to outline the bottom or the top of any of your fruits. So look at, we could take it right now and trace all the way around as an outline color. I'm gonna do the same thing around my big pumpkin. When you're all finished outlining, you're gonna put that color back. So we're gonna take our white and it's not gonna show up right now, but later when we paint, our white is gonna show up. So we're gonna take our white as our secret spy color. We're gonna take this color. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna trace right next to our curved line right here. So you're gonna trace white. And I know you can't see it, but I just, took my white pastel and I rubbed it real hard right there. And then we're gonna trace it right next to each one of these stripes. So I want you to hold your pastel firmly in your hand and push it across the line so it's tracing right next to the line. Now, if you're using crayons, you're gonna to wanna to rub it maybe once or twice to get it a little bit harder onto the paper. Now later, if you're using your muscles really push down, later when we paint over this, the white is gonna pop through. I call it my secret spy color. You won't see it until we paint over it later. Right now, it's not really showing up on my paper. I'm gonna put a little bit up here at the top and a little bit on the top of my stem. I'm also gonna scribble a little bit of white on one side of my lemon. I know you can't see it, but you will later. And I see some white right here. Do you see the white? So I'm gonna scribble a little bit of white on this side of my squash. I also see a little bit of light color right in the middle here. So I'm not gonna put too much, but I am gonna scribble a little bit right in the middle there. And you could even put a tiny bit at the top of your peppers if you want to. So from here, now we're gonna do our final part and that is our blue outline. We're gonna be creating a blue outline using our blue oil pastel. So I want you to look in your box and try to find a blue that looks like a color that would show up really bright on your picture. And what you're gonna do is very simple. We're just gonna copy what our artist did. Do you see how he traced around each one of the vegetables and fruits? That's all we're gonna do with our blue. So I'm gonna take my blue and the first thing I'm gonna do is make a blue outline around my pumpkin. I'm gonna trace around the top and the bottom. And I'm gonna make my line two times around so it's a little bit thicker. All right, my pumpkin is done. And now I'm gonna trace around my lemon. Now the final part, I see that he has a little bit of scribbles of blue inside here. So I'm just gonna scribble a little blue in the hole, but I'm gonna leave some paper showing. I can't wait. Are you ready to paint? I am. Let's put our pastels back in our box. We're gonna move our box off to the side and now we're gonna get our paints ready. So I've got my napkin, my paintbrush, I have a little bowl of water. I have my paints. I'm gonna put my paints up here at the top. And the first thing I want to do is add a little water to each one of my paints that I'm gonna be using today. Well, we're gonna need yellow, so I'm gonna wash my brush and I'm gonna drop a couple drops of water in my yellow. 
So I just kind of shake my brush right over the top. I'm not sticking my brush in the paint. Now I'm gonna want some red for my peppers. I might even wanna add a little orange to my peppers. I'm gonna put a little water in my orange too. And what other colors should we use? Oh, what about this? We're gonna need some green. So put some water in your green. And we're gonna need some blue. And what about our eggplant? Our eggplant is purple. So we're gonna need some water in our purple. Now I, want, I will be also using a little brown, I think, for my squash. If you look, it's kind of like a light brown, like a tan color. So we might add a little brown there. If you wanna make a gray background the way I made mine, you can add a little bit of water to your black. Let's put some in just in case. So I guess basically I am using every single color today in my paint set. That's gonna be super fun. Okay, now my suggestion is to start with the lightest color in our watercolor box and that's yellow. So I'm gonna take my brush and I'm not gonna stick it in the yellow paint. I'm just gonna tap it on the water. I'm gonna float it right here, that water that's floating on top. I'm gonna to tap my brush and I'm gonna take my yellow and I'm gonna paint my lemons. So the first thing I'm gonna do is grab a little bit more water. And I'm gonna scoop up that yellow paint and I'm gonna paint my lemons. So grab a little bit of water and your yellow water paint. I'm not gonna stick my brush into the paint. I'm just kind of using the water that floats on top and I'm gonna paint my lemons. I'm gonna take a little yellow and I'm gonna paint one side of my squash with my yellow. And I'm gonna paint a little bit of yellow over my squash. This is where you're gonna to start to see my white oil pastel popping through. Remember I told you it wouldn't show up until later. So watch as I paint this yellow over my squash you'll start to see my white lines popping through my paint. When you're all finished with your yellow, the next color we're gonna look for is orange. I'm gonna grab a little bit of orange and I'm gonna put a little orange into my pumpkin. Look at how pretty that is. When you're finished putting orange on your pumpkin, there's another place we could put orange. Look right down here at our peppers. I wonder what those would look like with a little orange inside. Let's try it. So I'm gonna get a little bit more of my orange paint water and I'm gonna paint a little orange on my peppers. Our next color we're gonna look for is red. So my red is right next to my orange. I'm gonna add a little bit more water to my red. I'm gonna scoop up some red in my brush, just that water, I'm gonna paint red over my peppers. And I'm gonna put a little bit of red in my eggplant. Rinse out my brush. Now my next color I'm going to try is over here next to my yellow, it's my green. So I'm gonna clean my brush in my water, dip my brush into the water that's floating on top of my green. And I'm gonna put some green on this side. And then I'm gonna also add a little bit more water and paint this side of my squash too. Now you'll notice we put some white oil pastel on this side. So my squash is gonna be a little bit different on this side than this side. When I'm done painting my squash, my next one is gonna be my purple eggplant. I'm gonna put some purple right over my eggplant. And I'm also gonna put a little purple right in here on top of those blue scribbles that I did. My final color is gonna be blue. So I'm gonna go in and put my brush after it's clean into my blue paint water. And I'm gonna take some blue and put it on the bottom of my eggplant. I'm gonna put a little bit of blue on the bottom of my squash. And I'm gonna take some blue and I'm gonna trace around each one of my vegetables and fruit. And don't worry if when you're painting, 
your other paints mix together. That is absolutely okay. Sometimes your colors are gonna mix together. Maybe the orange from your squash is gonna leak out into your blue background. That is absolutely fine. It's kind of fun to mix the colors up. Now, when you're all finished painting your outside line, your blue line around your whole picture, look, we kind of copied what our artist did. Do you see that? It looks very much the same. Now, the final thing is if you want to add a gray background. So we don't wanna paint with black. We wanna paint with a really watery black to make gray. So I'll show you in my painting, my gray is kind of similar to his gray. And the way I did that was I just used the water floating on top of my black and a lot of water on my paper. So the first thing I'm gonna do is put water on my paper. So I'm gonna take my brush and put a little bit of water up here. Now, don't worry, it might start to make the blue paint leak as we do this. And that is absolutely okay. So you see when I touch the blue, the blue starts to leak out like this. That is okay. It's kind of fun. It's kind of having a little dance party all by itself. So I'm going to wet this side of the paper. And then I'm going to take the tiniest bit of black on the tip of my brush. Do you see? I didn't dip, dip my whole brush in, just a little bit. And I'm going to take that black and I'm going to spread it around really fast on my wet paper. It's not very dark. Now, if you put too much, let's say you put it and it's really dark like that. All you have to do is put some more water on it and then spread it around. And you can thin out that color. See, I can scoop up this color and I can use it on the rest of my painting. All I have to do is add some water up at the top of my paper. I can grab this leftover too much dark black and I can carry it over here and I can paint with it in another part of my paper. Is your paper starting to curl up like mine is? That's very normal when that happens and all you have to do is just push it down with your finger. So I'm gonna keep wetting my paper with my paint water. I'm gonna grab a tiny bit more tip of black on the tip of my brush and I'm gonna carry it all the way around the edge of my paper until I have no white paper showing at the very end. Well, look at this. I think my painting is almost done. How did your painting turn out? Our artist today's name is Mardios Sarian, and he is an Armenian painter and he loved to paint fruits and vegetables. I hope you had fun today painting with Mrs. Torres. I have fun painting with you. Why don't you send me a picture of your painting to rtorres at lcusd.net. Have a wonderful day.